Hello guys! You all know how the companies are tend to set the price of the thing we're not really know ridiculously high. This is the timer of my washer machine, my laundry machine. It stays stuck in mid-cycle so I need to replace it and they're selling this thing 240 bucks. It's Canadian, it's a little cheaper in US but it's still crazy expensive it's almost half the price of the machine itself so today we will try to fix it so let's watch it so to remove the timer we obviously need to pull the washer out of this of his hole but the first thing you need to do is to disconnect it so you can play with it safely without getting a short the next step is to turn off the water so you don't make a mess and to remove the drain So the first step is to remove the screws on both sides and this screws one quarter of inch on both sides. It was like that, I pull from the front and you lift on both sides and you will have the head of the control panel show you the mess in the wire so you need to be careful not to pull and uh, rip off the hose or any wire so you need, you need to disconnect everything before take going away with the head or the control panel i only have one end but should not be a big thing again here we have a ground we can use our screwdrivers to disconnect it without the bit those screws are pretty uh, common to be one quarter of each uh, size so it's very practical to have a screwdriver like that when you're working on appliance Let's see that. Of house things, if I can see it like that. Obviously, you need to remember where uh, every connector goes, but uh, it's pretty simple since this one don't reach here and this one obviously doesn't fit there. So it's not very confusing, but still, if you're not sure, you better take a picture or write it down before disconnecting everything. Now we only have the timer to disconnect. And this one might be pretty hard to disconnect. Let's see. When you have only one end, I will try to hold it. Ellie. There we go. 
and we have this little buddy here which also need now i have some loose i can rest a bit so we have to lift the tab here and pull on it very gently because it's a very tiny plastic tab there we go now it will be way easier to work on it and remove the timer to remove the knob I don't know if you can see I will put the camera closer you need to hook up that little tab is the hand of the shaft or the hand of the the, the pin that holding the knob and uh, there's a little hole on the side it's pretty hard to show you right now but what you need to do is to pull on that so it released a little tab in the front so you can pull on the knob I will use this piece of uh, wire st steel steel wire I don't know how you call it but what you, I need to do is to hook the hand of the shaft with that pull up and pull on the knob on the other sides the, the, <laughs> the, easiest way, the easiest way to do that will be to have three ends but I don't have so I have to deal with that and there we go it's released and as you can see now that it's removed you will understand better this little pin when it's pushed push those two tab out which lock the knob in place when I pulled the little pin in the middle uh, it allowed the the tab on both sides to uh, go in and release the button uh, if I push the other side you will see the pin will go back to its place Let me show you from this side it's already gone but I will try to pull on it again so you will understand As you you saw right now the pin goes in but now I can release the chrome around here and uh, disconnect or uh, unscrew the timer from the front panel or the control panel and I believe this one is smaller so my screwdriver won't fit yeah it won't fit this time so i will use a set of plier because i don't want to go outside and fetch my tool call me lazy if you want should not be very tight anyway so this is the bolt that holding the timer to the front panel or the control panel don't lose it there we go as you can see they're all with uh, a hook they're on both sides in the rear and in the front they all hook like this in the, the 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 plate of the control panel and this is a lock pin so what I need to do what you need to do is to raise this to uh, allow the the timer to go on this way uh, I will have to drop the camera because I need both end to do that but what I will do is pull that tab to release the timer and I will pull trying to not cut myself on that piece of metal better maybe use a screwdriver And this is it I have the timer as you can see it's sealed never been opened before so to open the timer you have six tab on each side and even two on the front or on the side of the connector so it make eight tab total that you need to uh, pry open slightly not break anything with a flat screwdriver or a small pry bar i will try with this little buddy first 
I must say guys, it was the first time I was opening a washer machine timer. So I'm kind of learning in the process. So if you saw me or see me, is it thing? It's because it is the first time I'm doing this. something to pry it open so it doesn't close back so it don't break anything right this one is broken a good start just need to wedge something here so it doesn't close back So now it should pry open. Sorry, it's pretty hard to work on it and to show you at the same time. Yeah, I need to see what I'm doing, so I won't show you, but you understand that principle. <clears throat> Can I open this like that? Uh, no, I need to cut the seal and pry those as well. open and I need to pinch my little buddy here so the center shaft or the middle plate needs to stay down so I can pull on it Trying to show you, but need both end. So as you can see, there's no much in the cover, just the tab that goes on the big wheel that make turn the control, and a little aluminium tab on the side. So this one is locked. So the problem must be here. Let's see if we can remove it. This one can be removed, not really. So let's remove it. So the way it works is just the, the wheel changing the eye of certain tab and uh, it makes them contact together and contact with the tab underneath. And as you can see, those two are pretty, uh, I can't say conk, but uh, they're black and there's some kind of cross uh, building between the contact and the contact uh, it's not good anymore uh, which make the timer stuck in the same position because it doesn't receive the signal, the signal to move over so what we will do or what I will do is clean those contacts so the current pass freely and to clean that, I will just use a light grit sandpaper. So, uh, I don't know if you can see. It's pretty black between those connectors. I'm trying to make an angle so, so you can see. If 
between those two even here it's a bit dirty but th those are the real problem this is some 1000 grit Now it's cleaned. Let's see if there's any more who need to be cleaned. Maybe it would be bad to pass between all of them. Now they are all super clean, let me show you. You can see now they are all shiny. Now to remove that, sorry you can't see much, I needed to pull those two tabs and pull on the shaft at the same time. Obviously I could not show you that and you having my boat end on this. So now it will be easier to put this body back at this place. I'm sorry you were not able to see much of what I did but it was simple I just put down or just lay down every tab on every plastic teeth uh, I tried to not move too much when I put it back in the cover and now they're stuck if I not pull on it they are at their right 
spot so now the only step to do is to put back the cover try to live with the little plastic tab that I've broken if it's not strong enough I will make a zip tie or something I will find a way to make it tight because those need to bend downward uh, and it create a tension in the, in the tab in the same time but everything seems to be at its place when I spin the wheel I see every tab moving which is good they're all clean now it's time to put back the cover this tab I have a particular place to go you can see uh, I got a tab here and it goes in this hole there in the little wheel so I need to make sure it's perfectly getting in there it's hard to see but uh, I have an indication with the dent on this side of the pipe okay so please get in way easier to put in than to take it out All the clips are in place. Try to spin it to make sure it's set the right. This is spin, so this is good. work fine as well we need to let this tab down for now that is placed now it's spinning as you can see I uh, know it's free but if I push it down we can hear the tab moving inside it's now time to go back and install it and see if the problem is fixed Button. and to put it back at its place I just need to go at the opposite direction that I was going when I installed it tight the lock tab is as is placed so it doesn't go anywhere now before installing everything I will okay hook it up back and I will try to run it and see if it's still working or uh, if I need to replace it Now as you can see my two hoses are connected and my drain is connected only the power need to be connected but I will wait until all my cables or all my wires are connected so I don't get a short. So we, we go backward from what we did 
when we removed everything This is connected. Where it will go. Here. This is connected. Everything's connected. Only the ground left to connect. Steer, babe. Steer. Steer with me. Now, before screwing it, I will try to make this thing work. The water is connected. Let's open the valve and see if we have a leak. A lot of people think because this is only tied by hand, there's a risk of leaking um, and it's false. You don't need a tool to uh, tie that. Only by hand it's fine. There's a little uh, O-ring or a rubber washer in it, which is sitting between the, the seat of the hose and the valve itself. Uh, so as soon as the rubber is tight on the valve, there's nowhere that the water can leak so i usually i see often i often see complain about people saying there was a leak because the installator only tied it by hand it was not the fault of the installator on this one because it doesn't need to be tied by anything else than your end you don't need a tool to tie that sometimes it's very tight with time so you need a tool to disconnect it but when you're connecting it if it's in good condition, you don't need a tool to screw that. But it's now time to try our machine. It was on. <laughs> As you can see, I got a slot here. And I got uh, a part that is more elevated in air, so it goes like that. And this one, obviously, I need to push on this body here. So if we set that at off, should not start. We're good. Now it's filling water, so we know it is at the right position. But let's see which one is faster. It's smooth, uh, very easy. Let's say we just, I need, I will put a small and I will do a wash and see. 
I won't do a wash with clothes just in case it gets stuck. I don't want to uh, stay with clothes full of water and soap on my hand and finish that uh, by hand. So I will do a, a full wash without any clothes in it. No worry guys, my washer machine is not that loud and doesn't make those weird sounds. Uh, you hear, you hearing these sounds because I multiply the speed of the video by 10, reason why it's so uh, weird, but don't worry, uh, it makes a sound of a regular washing machine.
as you can see guys it was not super easy to fix it but it was not crazy hard either as soon as I understand how the thing was working uh, I managed to put it back together and it worked perfectly I just saved 240 bucks so before going out and buying a new appliance guys uh, it doesn't cost nothing to you to open the things and see if you can fix it for yourself and save money on the way. If this video helped you guys, please like it and subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the little bell so you will be notified as soon as I will release a new video. So on this, I wish everybody a great day and see you later. Goodbye.